Coifin is a really powerful tool that you can use to compare stocks within a sector. Today, I'm going to share with you my uh, use of the Coifin platform. Hi guys, this is Dean from Pervasives, where we analyze sectors and industry and publish uh, economic data. So today we're going to look at the Coifin platform again. I did the tutorial before and it was quite popular, so I'm going to revisit that again and explore a little bit more how I use it. I'm just going to show you a dashboard I've created. The dashboard I have created is a sector, which is the diversified telco services sector and is cross geographies. So it's global. What's really powerful is that you can, for example, focus on one industry or sector within one geography. So for example, there I could have just focused on the US, but I went ahead and took all the telco services companies in the world. If we look on the left hand side of the screen, you will see my dashboards. I have a lot of them. I wish Coifin hopefully in the future will be able to group dashboards because I created a dashboard for each industry or for each geography. It's pretty useful that way. So if we look at this dashboard, let's create one from scratch together. So for that, you first need to go over to new dashboard, click and uh, let's create a sector, US sector pervasives. I will call it USP. Let's start with blank. So you'll be presented with this screen. So what you want to do is you add components. You can add a watch list or charts. For example, if I add a component, you have the choice. We're going to start with a watch, watch list table. And then further on, we can add a performance graph, which is the one I use the most, or a scatter plot, which is very powerful as well. So let's start with the watch list table. Once you have the watch list table, I would invite you to make it big. At first, we can edit that later. And then this is the way Coifin work. You've created one dashboard, but within a dashboard in a table, you'll have to pull in a watch list. I can choose from my existing watch lists or I can create a new one. I'm going to choose an exist existing watch list. The building products sector. So we have a couple of companies there. By default, it pull up a couple of metrics. We're going to change that now. So you have the choice to go for templates. This is what we're going to create now. We're going to create a template or you can just start and edit the column. So for example, if I select a template, as you can see, I have a few, you can go like take a performance. Yes, load. It's going to change the metrics, which shows me the performance of each. You can go through, for example, I created a template called International Industries, which is my latest one. As you can see there, I've loaded this dashboard with a load of indicators. So for example, if we start from the left side, I have a flag so I can see which country it is the actual quote price, then I have a performance. The one day, the one week, the one month, the graph for one month, the three months, the graph for three months, the six months, the graph for six months, etc. Then I have the market cap, which is useful if you want to avoid micro cap stocks or you want to go over a certain level of capitalization or under. Uh, the PE for year one forward PE, not the current PE, then PE for year two in the future, the EPS percentage for year two. So this is the growth percentage. Okay. Now this whole section here I've built out, this is basically analyst averages of future growth rates. And if you know, if you've been around the, and you've traded for a while and you're Bit of the fundamental side you'll know that the market is forward looking so these metrics are quite important eps sales revenues etc then i have the average analyst rating enterprise value divided by the ebitda which is a ratio the debt by equity the short interest dividend yield ev to sales the peg ratio the cash flow from operation growth rate trailing 12 months this is the acronym there which i will show you you can change and the return on equity and the growth profit margin. All by themselves, all these metrics are just metrics. They're very, they, they become important when you're trying to compare apples to apples. As you can see, I don't have, for example, the notional revenue amount of each company. For example, you have Apple and Microsoft. Some of them will make, this is an example. One of them will make X amount of billions in sales per year, the other, makes twice less, for example. And you can't really compare because these two companies are different sizes. What I have here is all these metrics, or at least most of them, will have 
comparable metrics. So you're basically, okay, if I look at the EPS growth rate for the next 12 months, I have percentages. So this is something I can compare between all these companies in that industry. I can objectively say, this is forecasted to grow more than this one. Same with the other ratios on the right. You see return on equity is percentage. What else you got? The analyst rating, it's very comparable. Um, the cash flow growth rate, again, it's a percentage. You have PE ratios are, are ratios, so they're comparable. And obviously the performance is very comparable. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to template, go back to the default view, less yes load, and I'm gonna show you how you go about create that dashboard for yourself. So first you head over to columns, and then here is where you will pull in each metric. So for example, I don't want the last price. Well, I'm gonna keep the name, the last price, the ticker is locked, you can't uh, remove that. But for now, we're gonna remove the PE, one month, three months, one year and then i'm gonna go through so you have a few selections there you can go for market data for technical analysis the performance in price and basic market data so basic market data that's where you will find the spark line graphs which is the one you saw which is quite good so for example if i take the one month three months six months they're loaded in there and then i can just uh, close and as you can see they're here I'm just going to short them a little bit like so. Then I'm going to go back to columns. Uh, we'll explore, I'll, 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 I'll explore a bit more what you can do. Asset specific. So this is if you have ETFs and mutual funds, you have other metrics, for example, metrics specific to ETFs, same for mutual funds, fund statistics, etc. The financial. So this is your balance sheet, your income statement, cash flow, and then What's, what I use the most is obviously the growth rates, okay? So you have a heap lot of growth rates you can choose from. And here's another important part. As you can see, some of them I have starred, which is easier for me to go instead of every time going to rummage through all this data of metric choices, you can star them and then they will be saved in your favorites over here. Financial, pretty straightforward. Then analyst estimates. So this is another part which I use a lot, especially the forward growth stuff. The ratings, uh, for example, we can pull up the analyst uh, average rating right there. We'll start this one so I can access this quicker later. Forward estimates. I'm going to pull in the um, EBIT, uh, EBITDA consensus average for the next 12 months and four year one estimate. Forward growth. So let's say the EPS estimate, year-on-year -year change percentage. Yeah, I like the idea of that one, so I'll pull this one in. And then I will also pull, pull in the portfolio tools. This is a really key area. So this is if you want to keep track of open position. So it's kind of like a portfolio tracker. It's a bit clunky, it's a bit iffy, but I appreciate the effort. It's not going to be perfect, but you can find use out of it. The other one I was going to show you, actually, when I was talking about portfolio, I was talking about created by me. You go to create new metric, okay? And this is really powerful. For example, let's say I'll put, a, I'm going to create a single line text and I'm going to say, this is a long or short, create that column. And then I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to put it at the front. Now, let's go back to our dashboard. As you can see, we have our long short here and we have all our new metrics here. So now that I've created the created by me long short, what I can do is I can create long short. Or what I can also do, so for example, if I want to go long as a company or short a company, I can keep that my notes that way. Another way I can do it is by going to created by me, create new color labels. Again, that's probably the better one for long short. Let's do the same example, create column, it's this one. Uh, okay, we'll remove this one and then here. Okay, now you can create a label. And there's a new label and then short, move this. Let me remove this one. And then this one, I can change the color to green. And this one, change the color to red. Then when I go long, short, etc., you get the idea. And then I can maybe move this one more at the front. Very powerful use of um, 
that feature, what you can also do is a portfolio tool or find it again. Uh, notes, okay. So you can pull in notes. If I go there, I have notes here. For example, for this company, GWA Group Limited, I can go ahead and write my notes. Growth rates, good, blah, blah, blah. And then I can put this on F1, make this a quote. So this is really powerful. Oh, I forgot to save changes, but if I change save, save changes, it's saved. It goes up in blue. If I quit this page and come back to GWA in when I'm in the graph, then the notes will still be there. Now, another thing you should, should use is to rename. So you right click on it. No, yeah, you can, you, you click on it and then you can change the label. So one month instead of this long name, see, I've changed it. Now I can make it a little bit shorter. So I'm not wasting space. Save same get the gist of it because some of them like for example this one have quite long names you can probably find an acronym that talks uh, to you and that you will remember then the next thing is you can group these companies it, this is a sample of building product companies so if I group them you have a choice of grouping by country and they're all grouped under different countries yeah so they're all grouped by their respective countries you can group them by sector they're all grouped under industrials and by industry building products so this works but sometimes i mean this is a bit subjective some companies will be displayed in within a certain industry but the investor can decide which industry they're really a part of so what you can do as well is let's go to custom groups if we go to custom groups i can add a new group call it my industry number two there's a uh, so you can move the stocks in the in the other group then you can put summaries so let's add a new summary row let's do an average and now you have for example for the analyst rating you have the average of the building product industry now this is only based on a sample, of course. This is computed directly. This is not some external data. It's just doing the average at the bottom. But if you have pu uh, pulled in all the stocks in that industry, you have the average of the industry right there at the bottom for each metric, which is really powerful again, because for example, you could say, this is the total return, or this is the PE, or this is the whatever metric, the cash flow from operation for all these companies. And I can see that the industry average of the total return is 69%. Therefore, this company, GCI, is above the average of the industry. So what can Pervasives do for you? Get sector and industry short-term economic data that we collect thousands of unstructured data that we compile and process so you can get what matters. Go to pervasives.com today and explore which industries and sectors are growing or contracting.